Today, the message, the title of the message is, Well Done. Well, that would be nice to hear, wouldn't it? Wouldn't that be nice to hear from Jesus? Well done. Well done is a phrase that when spoken over us should bring us great satisfaction if it comes from somebody we respect or admire, right? So, well done is someone's assessment of accomplishments that we've been responsible for. So, there are different people in our lives, and they carry different weight. Their opinion carries different weight. And there's some people, a well done is a really big deal. Like, I'll give you an example. Uh, My father and my mother. For my father, a well done is a big deal, because he doesn't do that. For my mother, it's not a big deal, because my mom says, you do everything wonderful, everything's perfect, you're fantastic. (laughs) That's my mother. So, I realize she gives away compliments really easy. My dad does not give away compliments easy. But then there are people in your life that you respect, and they give them away where they belong, but they only give them away if they really mean it, you know? And that's the compliment you really cherish, is somebody that you truly respect, you look up to, you admire, and they say, you did a great job. That's like, oh, I feel wonderful. Doesn't that make you feel good when people do that? When people do that, every child longs to hear his parents say, well done, right? Even if they say, I don't really care what you think, they really go, but but I'd like you to like what I do. I'd like you to think I'm smart. I'd like you to think I'm a good kid. They want to hear it. They want to hear it. Every artist showing his works loves to hear somebody say, that's well done. Every author, every surgeon, every construction worker, every teacher, athlete, chef, parent, they love to hear, well done. Because we're all trying to do something, aren't we? And hopefully we do it well. So, well done feels good to the hair. Uh, but what really feels good is when somebody says it whose opinion counts the most. You know, you know if I was an athlete, well, like I, I used to be a really big martial arts fan, right? And so, if people that watch me say, you're really good, if they said that, I'd go, well, thank you. But if Bruce Lee said I was really good, I'd be going, well, thank you. That means a lot because you're an expert at this, right? So, It kind of matters who it's coming from sometimes. And I want to hear well done from the Lord. How about you? Is that important to you? Are you okay with a C minus or do you want an A plus? Now, it's not about performance necessarily. It's more about are you all in and have you given your whole heart? You see, the widow who just had a couple of mites, she was celebrated for giving from her from her lack, all she had. She was giving her 100%, even though it was two little pennies. But God said, I see your heart, and your heart's 100%. Well done. Whereas there was a Pharisee who had lots of money, and he gave a big chunk of money, but his heart wasn't in it. And the Lord goes, that wasn't your best, right? So God wants our best. And if I, uh, you know, if I meet Jesus at the gates of heaven, I don't know how that's going to work. You know, I mean, he's going to catch us up if we're raptured. But, but at some point, we're going to be face to face with him, and he's going to give an assessment, right? Because the Bible talks about him saying, in a parable, it talks about him saying, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of your Lord. I want that occasion to be like that for me, don't you? Oh, my God, I so much want to hear a well done. This is the prize that we as Christians should desire above all others. This is the goal that should drive everything we pursue in life. This should be the reward that we covet the most, are hearing the Lord say, well done. You know, I can say well done, and you're listening to this, and you go, oh, that would be nice. But if I say it, personalize it, you know, I say, Gee, can you imagine Teresa? I say, well done, Teresa. It's like, wow, you talk, you're talking to me. Yeah. Well done, Paula. Well done, Rose. And the Lord's saying it? Oh, my gosh. Will that be the most marvelous moment to hear the Lord say, well done? Matthew 25, 21. This this is the parable that this, this phrase comes from. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Now, I'm never going to forget hearing Billy Graham say something that really took me back. Billy Graham, who knows how many millions of people came to Jesus because of that man's preaching? Who knows? 
Who knows? You see, even the fact, like for example, I'll just take myself for example. There are some people who I know I've brought to the Lord. Now that I could say, well, I could count them. I could make a list and say, there's this many. But that's half the story. It's not even half the story. Because how do, I, how do you know how many of those people brought somebody to the Lord? So if Billy Graham got a million people to come to Jesus, that could be 10 million, 100 million, who knows? Because one tells another and it goes on. And that was all because one person said something that was really important and somebody listened to it, right? So Billy Graham said this years ago. He was in an interview and he said, my greatest fear is that I will stand before the Lord and he will not say, well done. If Billy's got questions about that, I should have questions about that. I should think about, like, if he's, I thought he'd be going, oh, it's a shoe in It's not a problem. It's going to be easy. He'll for sure say, well, then I've talked about, I've talked to a lot of people about Jesus. But he said, you know what? I, I'm hoping that'll happen, but I'm not sure. That made me think. What, well, what do I think about myself? Well, first thing's going to be first is, I'm going to tell you the truth. The Lord is good. He's gracious. He's kind. He's kind. Some people take kindness as meaning he'll cut you some slack and lie. He's not going to lie. If you didn't do well, he's not going to say, I'm so kind, I'm going to say, you did well. He's going to tell the truth. He's only going to say, well done, if it's the truth. So Matthew 25 that we just read, the Lord is saying to a servant um, that what basically the servant did the servant took what the Lord had given him to do, and he did what he should have done with it. And in the end, the Lord said, now that you've done all that you should have done with what I gave you, I'm giving you this commendation. Well done. Okay? So what does that look like for you and me? What have you been given? What have you been given to do something with in life? So let's take a little closer look at this parable. We're going to look a few more verses. Matthew 25, 14 through 17. For it is just like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted them with his possessions. He entrusted them with his stuff. Do you know that everything on the earth is the Lord's? Not only everything in the earth, the earth, the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein. You're the Lord's too. You all, everything belongs to Jesus. The air that you breathe is borrowed, okay? It belongs to Jesus. So, this master was going on a journey, and he entrusted to the servants his possessions. To one he gave five talents, to another two talents, and to another one talent. And a talent is a measure of gold or silver back in those days. 16th verse. The servant who had received the five talents went at once. Do you hear that? At once. You see, this is sometimes a measure of how all in we are. The Lord tells us to do something. We go, I'm thinking about it. Or do you go, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You see, deferred obedience is disobedience. Do you know that? Saying, uh, yeah, but not now, is saying no. Do you realize that? Because you don't know if you have tomorrow, do you? But you know you got right now. So it says, the servant who had uh, received five talents went at once and put them to work and gained five more. Likewise, the one who had two talents gained two more. But the servant who had received one talent, remember this, this particular servant, the Lord had decided, you can't handle a whole lot, so I won't give you too much. I'll give you just enough that you can handle. I'll give you one. The other guy has to work with five. That's a big responsibility. But you can only handle one. I'll give you one. You can, you can at least do something with one. So the servant he gave one talent... He dug a hole in the ground, and he hid his master's money. So the servant that received five talents took what God had given him and made him responsible over, and he worked with that thing the best that he could, and he gained profit for his master, right? The servant that received two talents also took what he was given. That's what he's responsible for. You're only responsible for what you've been given. You may say, I don't have a big platform. I don't have a lot of money. I don't have this. You've got something. And even if it's small, you've got something. Even if it's the two widow's mites, you've got something to work with. So the ser per servant, servant who had received two talents also took what he was given, and he worked with it, and he made gain for his master, right? But the servant who was given the responsibility over just one talent, just one, he did nothing with it. Not only did he not put it to work, 
He didn't even put it in the hands of a banker who could have at least given him interest for it, for the use of the money. He didn't even do that. And the Lord called that servant who buried that talent, he said, you are wicked and lazy. Lazy. Okay? Now, lazy is something you call somebody not if they're disabled to the uh, point of not being able to do it. You say it to the person who's totally able to do it, but just didn't do it, right? So this servant was totally able to do what the master had put into his hands. He was totally able, but he didn't. He decided, I don't feel like doing it, all right? So, which servant are you? There's a question. Which servant are you? Whatever the Lord has given you to work with in this life, Are you actively using it for anything that will bring glory to God's kingdom, that will bring profit to God's kingdom? Are you using what you've got? You make, I don't have a a platform to speak from. You know, what do you have? Now, Doug, back here, Doug. Doug is not preaching behind a pulpit, but Doug says, I can bring food to those who are in need, right? He found something he could do, and it's the master's work, and the Lord's well pleased with that. Doug didn't say, I can't do anything because I don't have you know, the power to do things. He says, I can do with what I have, and I can help people, right? So what are you doing with what you have? You might think, well, I don't have much, but that's not the point. Are you willing to do something with even the little that you have? That's the point. Because we can say, I will do something once the Lord gives me enough stuff that, that I, as resources. The Lord says, what are you doing with what you've got? What are you doing with what you've got? We are given one of the most valuable things in this world that everybody's given is time. Because you know what? You could be a multi-billionaire, but if you don't have time, what are you going to do with it? (laughs) You need time. You need time to spend it, time to use it, time to enjoy it. Well, God's given us time, hasn't he? What are you doing with your time? Even if you don't have a dollar, what are you doing with your time? Are you praying for others? Are you studying God's word? What are you doing with your time? Are you making a profit for the kingdom with your time? We're given doors of opportunity to minister God's goodness into other people's lives. Are we utilizing those opportunities? Are we looking for the door like Doug did to say, I can help walk through that door. I can offer help. Are we looking for that? We said, "Ah, don't give me any opportunities. Don't give me any responsibilities. I got my own thing going. Well, God's looking at what he's given you and saying, what are you doing with what I gave you? We're given health if we're here today, aren't we? None of us is in the hospital. We're all right here. Praise God, there's people in the hospital right now, right? We're given strength. We're given food, shelter, time, skills, talents, creativity. But are we using any of those things for the kingdom of God? Or is it just our own little life that we're building? Is our whole life only focused on what will profit us, but not what would profit the kingdom of God? Now, I'm not just talking. I'm asking you a question in your mind. Think about it. Is your whole life about what will profit you, or is it what will profit the kingdom of God? Think about that, right? Ask yourself the hard questions. Now, this is where most sermons on this verse, these verses we just read, would probably end. But there's a bigger picture I want to go into. Sometimes when we are running a race, we're only focused on the trophy at the end of the race, the prize. And that prize, the payoff at the end, we're going to get the gold medal or whatever it is. So we're focused on, I'm running this with all my might because I want the gold medal. And we know that this race is made up of many steps, and we've got to just keep going with our eyes on that gold medal. That's kind of the thinking we have a lot of times. It's our goal. We want to reach our goal. Well, don't let heaven or the rapture, that end trophy of life, being in heaven with Jesus or being raptured with Jesus, don't let that be so much your goal that you're not looking at where you're walking right now that you're not even paying attention to these steps that lead to that goal. You said, I'm focused on the, Jesus is coming, I'm looking for that, that's all I'm looking for. But what about today? What about the person who needs food? What about the person who's never heard about Jesus? What about the kindness that you could show to somebody who's hurting? Well, that's just one of the steps. Yeah, but you see, 
the great race that you're running is made up of a lot of steps, and the steps count. It's not just the prize at the end, it's the steps till you get there, right? In the parable that we just read, the master gave his servants their responsibilities, and he told them that he was going away but that he would someday come back, and they would have to give an accounting for what they did with what they had been given to work with while he was gone. Do you know that's no different for us? We have been given things in our life that we can work with for the kingdom, and the, someday the Lord will ask an accounting of what we've done with what we've been given. You might go, I don't like this sermon. That's making me feel, uh, you know, uptight. You know what? God never wrote his word or delivered his word so people would feel all relaxed about it. Sometimes it's a challenge to your flesh. Sometimes your flesh goes, I don't like that word. You know what? That's good. That's okay. Because God is speaking to your spirit. And he wants you to be everything you can be. He wants you to be all in. He wants you to be totally his. He wants you to be on fire. He doesn't want you to burn out. He wants you to flame out. He wants you to go up in a blaze of glory. He wants you to step out of this world saying, I did everything I could do for Christ. Not like, well, I just kind of wasted my time. I kind of, you know, sat, sat at the bus stop waiting for the bus from heaven to come pick me up. God says, what did you do with what I gave you? I gave you time. I gave you talent. I gave you opportunities. I gave you resources. What did you do with what I gave you? You know, God's really going to ask that? Okay. Maybe the one who did nothing in the parable thought he had more time. But you know what? You don't know when the master's coming back, do you? You know, for some of us, the master's coming back, it could be tomorrow, right? Because some of us, we don't, we don't know how much longer we'll live. We just don't know. Even people in good health, you don't know. You could get hit by a car. We don't know. I, God forbid that that happens. But I'm saying you have to live your life like this was your last day. Every day has to count. Every step of the race has to count. Not just the prize at the end, but every step of the race has to count. It has to be intentional. Today is the only day that you're promised, and tomorrow never comes for some people, right? I believe that if the master had only been gone for one day, that master in this parable, he, he said, I'm going on a trip, and I'll be back, and I'll give an accounting. If he had been, only been gone for one day, and he returned, but he found the one who had five talents, it said he immediately went to work with him. He found him working with him. He go, good job. You went right to work, Right? Even if he hadn't gained anything yet, just the fact you went right to work with what I gave you. He'd say, well done. Well done, right? So ask yourself, what has God given you to work with? What time, what talents, what resources, and have you been using them in a way that brings any profit to his kingdom, any eternal gain? If you haven't been doing much, then are you going to just sit there and wait for him to return and continue to do not much? Because you know what? The days are getting shorter. The days are getting shorter. We all know we're, we're nearer to the end than the beginning, aren't we? Mm -hmm. So what are the words we all want to hear when we stand before the Lord? I'm sure you have an idea. Well done. How many people want to hear well done? How many people want to hear, what on earth were you doing? Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful, faithful, faithful. You didn't drop the ball. You ran with the ball. You've been faithful with a few things. He says, I didn't even give you a whole lot to be responsible for, just your little life. And were you faithful with that? I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. You know what? I want to share his happiness. So that's what I want to hear. But is that really important to you? Is that really important to you? Do you really want to hear a well done from the Lord? Is that really as important to you as it should be? Some people go, well, I don't know if it is. Is it as important as it should be? Because it should be very, very important. Perhaps you are saying within yourself, well... Uh, you know, time is ticking, and, and there's a lot to be done, so I just don't know where to start, so I'm kind of just paralyzed. I, I don't even know where to start. Like, oh, oh my gosh, now that I want to get a well done, uh, it, the, the pile is so big of stuff that I could do. Uh, uh, you know, just start with one step. Just start. Just start. Just start. If he comes back tomorrow and you've started, he'll go, well done. 
right? Do something with what you have. Get started. Nail it down today and say, how can I get started with one step in the direction of doing something with what I've been given for the kingdom? Do you realize that some people who do all kinds of church stuff for appearances only may receive all kinds of praise from men but not from God? Because he's looking at your heart and he's saying, take what I've given you and run this race for my kingdom and do it because you love me and do it because you're thankful for all I've given you and do it for all the days and the opportunities and the time I've given you because I've blessed you. Will you show me that you actually care about what I've done for you? And it's like, well, Lord, I, I don't know. We can't be timid any longer. We've got to stand up. We've got to do it. Okay? We've got to not do it for the appearances of the church. We've got to do it for what God sees. Right? John, 14, or John 12, 42 through 43. Nevertheless, many of the leaders believed in him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him for fear that they would be put out of the synagogue, for they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. You know what? You've got to love the praise of God more than the praise of men. And you've got to say, even if nobody sees me, God sees me. And you've got to say, I'm doing this because you're watching Jesus because he's the one who judges the race, not the guy next to you. Right? Loving the praise of men is just something that tickles our pride and our ego for a moment, but it doesn't last, right? If we aren't careful, we can value fool's gold as being like the real thing. And the approval of men is fool's gold because it really doesn't carry any weight in heaven. Amen. Seeking man's approval is fool's gold. You're searching for a prize that really has no value. Galatians 1.10 says this, for am I now seeking the approval of man or God? Or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. Did you hear that? He's saying, if I'm a man pleaser, I'm not serving Christ. But, but, you know, some people use that as a, as a way to say, that's why I'm such a nasty person, I'm, because I'm not here to please you. That's not what it's about. It's about doing the right thing for God, because he, God is watching. And the right thing will include being kind to people, by the way. Right? It's not being a jerk and saying, well, I'm not a man pleaser. <laughs> that's why I'm in your face. Well, that's not the way it works. Okay. So, yes, 1 Samuel 16, 7. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature because I have rejected him. He says, don't look at the outside man. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. You know, the Lord looks at our heart. God is the one judging this beauty pageant, by the way. Okay? God is the judge. So let's change our focus today. Oh, well, let's, let's, let's think about, let's meditate on this. Don't meditate on what you should be doing right now. Don't meditate. If you know you should be doing it, do it. He that knoweth to do good and does not do it, to him it's sin. Right? Okay, so we've wasted a lot of time not doing what the Lord has asked us, but let's not let another day slip by. We can start. We can start the race right now, can't we? So how do we begin? How do we begin? Like I said, some people, they see the giant pile and say, well, there's a lot of stuff I've neglected. I got a lot to catch up to do. Just start with one day. Every long journey begins with one step. Let's take a step today, and then let's take one tomorrow. And then let's take one every day this month. And at the end of the month, if you keep going, you'll look back and say, I've covered a lot of ground. It takes one day at a time. What does it look like? One step looks like this. It is the things we can accomplish today, just today. Don't look for long-term goals of what you're going to do for God, and that could take a lot of years to cover. Just what can you do this day? Look at today. If you can make today a success and you add another day to that, it just continues on with that success. So what can you accomplish today? If you look at the big pile, it might overwhelm you. Just look at today. What can you do today for somebody? Like I said, Doug said, today I can offer my services to feed somebody. Good. Excellent. Good step, right? What can we accomplish today? We're not worried about how many miles away the finish line is. We need just to focus on the next step. Just the next step. That's all we need to do. Here's the shift that needs to take place with our mindset. Stop focusing on the day you will stand before the Lord in hopes 
that he'll say, well done. Because that might be a long ways off. But here's where your focus needs to be. What should I be doing to give the Lord a reason to say, well done, today? What can he do today that he can go, for today, well done? Not like, I'm working on it, so when I meet him, uh, you know, 20, 30, 40 years from now, he'll say, well done. What, why don't you just look for the well done for today? The well done for today. Because if you live a well done life today, and you live a well done life tomorrow, in the end, you will have lived a whole life of well done. Won't you? Rather than someday I'll cross the finish line and I will have accomplished all this stuff, and finally, it'll, when he adds it all up, he'll say, well done. How about today? Get a well done for today. Pick today to be the day you start getting a well done because you start changing your focus from the finish line to the step right in front of you, right? It goes from being a reward afar off to God running the race beside you, cheering you on each step. You're doing it. Come on. Let's, we, we can do it. Let's go. Let's go. Keep, run, keep running. Good, good job, right? Rather than Jesus way at the end and someday I'll, I'll get face to face, he'll say, well done. How about having Jesus running alongside you going, well done. Take another step. Well done. Do another, do another one. You're doing great. Get a well done every day, right? Instead of seeing the Lord way off on the horizon, at the finish line, start to see him as your coach that's following you along the course the whole way, that's cheering you along the course the whole way, right? That he's saying to you as you're whispering in your ear, as you take each well-done step, he's saying, you're doing great. Keep up the good work. You're going to win this race. Don't stop. You're killing it, right? Because he's cheering you on. That's what he wants to do. A life filled with well-done days is a life that will end with a well-done from the Lord. Begin to look at every day and everything you face in the day as an opportunity to hear another well done. When you have a challenge, for example, a challenge to be somebody who's nasty at you, to be nice to somebody who's nasty at you, it's a challenge. You go, I don't want to be nice to them. They're a jerk. And you, you, the Lord says, you know, this is an opportunity for you to get it well done. Oh, really? God bless you. Well done. Good job. It's an opportunity to get it well done. Oh, I got another well done, Right? Make that be your goal. When you stop and devote yourself to seeking the Lord's face above searching the internet, let that be something that brings pleasure to the Lord. Let your goals and your, 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 where your head is at, where your eyes are at, let it be focused on the things of the Lord, and he'll go, good choice, well done. You see, you know, I choose to study my Bible right now rather than studying this garbage out here. Well done. You know, I choose to be kind to my neighbor today that I really don't like, and I don't like what they're, you know, but I'm going to be nice because I'm going to show forth Christ to them. Well done. You know, I'm going to choose not to do what I have the power to do just because I have the power to do it, but I'm going to choose to, to uh, exercise grace right now. You know, grace right now. Well done. You know, I have the opportunity to to let this person just go off on their way to hell, their merry way, and never know a thing about Jesus, or I have an opportunity to actually tell them about Jesus, well done. Every day can have a well done. And a whole lot of well dones line up to a well done life, right? John, or James 1.22, we read, but be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourself. Do you know, if you hear the word... And you know what you're supposed to do, because the Word tells you, and you don't do it. It says, you're fooling yourself. I'm going to, at the end of life, somehow, Jesus is going to have a whole lot of grace on me because I wasted a whole lot of time and did what I felt I wanted to do, but I was weak, so, you know, he'll, he'll just run, put it under the rug, and he'll say, well done. No, no, not exactly. He'll say, what did you do with what I gave you? Did you do anything? Because if you didn't do anything, how am I going to say, well done? Because you have to do something to get a well done. So it says this, don't just be a hearer of the, of the word, be a doer, right? I know people get all hung up on anything that is called works because they say, well, hold on a minute, you're talking about works now. And we're not saved by works, we're saved by grace. That's true, we are saved by grace. And after you're saved by grace, you know what you're supposed to do? Works. Ephesians 2.10, for we are God's workmanship, we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Are you sure God wants us to do those? Which God prepared in advance as our way of life. I guess he wants us to do good works. Well, but, but you're not saved by good works. No, you're saved unto good works. And if you're really saved, good works are going to happen. And if you don't have any good works, we're going to question, Did you, do you really know him? Right? 
Okay. Even the things that are unpleasant in life can be another opportunity to hear the Lord say, well done. When that difficult coworker gets all ugly and up in your face and you choose to keep your composure and rule over anger, the Lord's going to say, well done. Right? Yeah. When you go that extra mile for somebody who does not deserve it, when you give others, even when they don't deserve it, when they don't even need it, you're just being kind. You know what? The Lord can say, you're being generous. Well done, right? When you pray for others, when you do good to others, when you deny your fleshly desire, when you devote yourself to doing the things that build up your spiritual man and bring closer intimacy between you and the Lord, when you make those kind of choices, the Lord will say, well done, well done, well done, right? If hearing a well done from the Lord becomes more important to you, it will begin to affect every choice and every thought and every action you take. If you say, before I make this decision on how I'm going to react right now or how I'm going to deal with the situation right now, what would get a well done? How would I handle this in such a way that the Lord would be pleased? If you had that filter in your mind before you made choices, it would change your choices, wouldn't it? You go, you know, I don't think if I did that, the Lord would say, well done, I guess I won't do that, right? How many sins and snares of the enemy could we avoid if before every choice we made, we first asked ourselves, would that be a well done? If you asked yourself that first. Before you spoke a word in haste, before you had an impulsive mood, before you took drastic measures, if you would stop long enough to ask yourself, would this choice bring, bring a well done or what on earth were you thinking? That would change our choices. If we would live our lives that way, can you imagine how much more well done we'd receive from the Lord? For every choice we make from now on, for every hard decision we make from now on, for every action we take from now on, if we would set our mind on determining to do what would please him and bring a well done, you'd bring great glory to your Father in heaven, and you would have great heavenly reward, and you would bring great profit to his kingdom if you just chose choices that are worthy of a well done. From the perspective that I just described, can you see how you can walk a walk that can look just like Jesus walked? Because you know what? He did all things well. The Bible says that. All things well. And what does well look like? Well, here's what Jesus said. John 8, 29. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone. Listen to this. For I always do what pleases him. Did you hear that? Jesus said, here's how my walk looks. I was sent by the Father, and he's always with me because I always do what pleases him. That gets a well done. What if you walk just like that? You say, you know, I'm gonna, everything I do, I'm going to do what pleases him. I'm going to make sure that before I make that choice, I decide what would please him. You'd be walking just like Jesus if you walked that way. Can you imagine the depth of fellowship you could experience with the Holy Spirit when you chose to live a life of well-done choices, right? You could say like Jesus. You can personalize it to yourself. You could say, the one who sent me is with me, the Holy Spirit. He has not left me alone. He won't because I always do what pleases him. Can you imagine having that testimony? Can you imagine? But you can. You can have it starting today. This is a life of glorious joy. It's a life of guiltless freedom, of intimate communion with the Lord. It's a path that is studded with many small stepping stones representing choices that are well done. Many stepping stones. Each day you have an opportunity. A choice to use what time you have for something for good for the kingdom. Your talent that you have, the treasure that you have, that God's put into your hands, all that you have in your hands. If it's big, well, maybe that represents the five talents. If it's small, maybe that represents the one talent. But the point is, everybody's got something. And God says, what are you doing with what I gave you? Right? He's put it into your hands. Why? Well, you see, the reason he put it into those servants' hands is he didn't give them a responsibility that was beyond their ability. He gave them something they were able to actually do. 
So what God's given you, you can't say, I can't, I can't do it. It's too big for me. He says, I've given you only what you can do. So I know you can do it. So let's not say I couldn't do it. Let's say, yes, Lord, I will do what you've given me to do. I want a well done. But I want to start hearing that every day. I don't want to wait to hear one well done at the end. Because if I don't get any well dones between now and the end, maybe I won't hear a well done at the end. But if I get a well done every day, because of every choice I make, I can be pretty certain I'm going to get a well done at the end, don't you think? Yeah. All right. We're going to stop right there. So I want to know this. I want to ask this. Is there anybody here today who doesn't know Jesus personally? You haven't asked him to come into your life and save you. Because if you have not, then you are lost. But Jesus wants to bring his salvation to you. He wants to forgive you for your sins. He wants to make you a brand new creation. He wants to make you a child of God. He wants to give you a place in heaven. If you have never given your life to Jesus, or if you said the words, but you didn't mean it, that still means you haven't done it. But if there's anybody here who wants to receive Jesus right now, please just raise your hand.